Thank you, Uncle Ted. Oh, you're good. So I was told I was going to shoot some taxpayer ammo today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got plenty of ammo. Special area just for that. I bet there is. Yeah, the south side of L.A. <laughs> Say again. No, we just take the most expeditious route we can. We're not looking for trouble. We're ready, but we're not looking. Yeah, I've been coming out here playing since 1967. Your grandparents were big fans. Did anybody tell you that when you came to a police spot, you got to work out? Yeah, <laughs> says who? Who, who thinks they're in charge of me here? I want to be there, motherfucker. <laughs> See, that's where you got up in the room. No wonder you got a broken fucking arm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cheat. Look, I didn't kneecap your ass. Right. It's all in jest. <laughs> he was a big fan. And remember, everybody remember the baby boom? That was me. <laughs> no, but we, we, I try to visit cops and military when I'm on tour every year. So what happened, son? Uh, What's he again? Shoulder surgery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're doing all right? He's a police chief. Yeah. Yeah? Good yeah. for you. Well, I'm like the guitar chief. <laughs> So, shoulder surgery, too much archery, what? Too much gym work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good for you. So, is this, is this an official canine dog? or? We're working on that, right, Chief? <laughs> it, it is our semi-comfort dog. Yeah. yeah. They all are. I, I'm a yeah. addicted dog guy. I got three dogs. We, we I have got, two police dogs. I got a, uh, a Michigan State Police Canine Shepherd. And the, the only... State Police Canine Shepherd that is a world-class duck hunter, by the way. <laughs> I mean, I got Labradors and Catahoulas, and I have to let Sadie's the Lab, Happy's the Catahoula, and they're both just phenomenal hunters. They can retreat the neighbor's kid if I ask them to. Um, but Coco, the German Shepherd, I'd take him to the duck blind, take her to the duck yeah. blind, and of course she's watching the other ducks, looking at the ducks, and they tilt their head with those big-ass ears. <laughs> Well, fuck, I can do this. And so after Happy and Sadie bring me some ducks, I get Coco, and I go, can you get that duck? She goes, let her go. She dives in like a Labrador and brings that duck back. Where do you, where do you live? In, uh, we live in Texas, okay. uh, but we still have our hunting swamps in Michigan. So we rotate out of Michigan during the rock and roll season. You still doing a lot of concerts? You know, 40 or 50 a year. Oh, quite a bit. I'm old. I'm 71 this year. Wow. I think we can all agree... Uh, the greatest philosopher of all times was Dirty Harry, when he, yes. when he said a good man knows his limitations. So I rock my balls off every night. But then, then I hunt and fish and trap and farm and ranch, September, October, November, December, January, yeah. February, March, April. Stack the freezers. Have you done any new songs? Or you just Yeah, I got a brand new record out called The Music Made Me Do It. Okay. Self-titled, autobiographical. Yeah. Now, I've, I just met with Wayne Kramer from the MC5, we both were born in 1948 in Detroit. He's a great guy, and he had a band. Well, before there was the Beatles and the Stones, we were doing, you know, Lonnie Mack and Dwayne Eddy, 
Chip, then Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley were side by side taking the same guitar stuff. I didn't know them at the time, but it's an interesting story, especially in an, a law enforcement atmosphere. So pay close attention. <laughs> so we both started out in that American dream post World War II. The whole world looked at America for beating the Japs and the Nazis because we're the only ones that have the incentive to get home to individual freedom. Write that down. The French couldn't have done it. The British couldn't have done it alone. It took a guy that goes, I got a constitution. I can have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness when I get home. Fuck these Japs and these Nazis. I'm going to kill them all. And that's what they did. So we came home. Am I, am I resonating with some of you guys? <laughs> maybe, I, I not, maybe not a good way, but go ahead. No, <laughs> not, not a good way. Then you're a dumb fuck. You should get out of here. <laughs> This is all self-evident truth, shit. No, 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 no. I'm no. right. So anyhow, so there was this positive, outrageous, unprecedented glow. Detroit was the arsenal of democracy. Now, right now, I'm the arsenal of democracy. So the positive spirit with that new rock and roll was addictive, outrageous, uppity. These black guys singing Tutti Frutti and Long Tall Sally and with such musical authority that it hooked everybody. And so Wayne and I, and I'm not saying something behind his back because I, I reminded him of this two hours ago. So we're addicted to this new electric guitar. We're going through life. We're 12 years old, got a band. 13 years old, got a band. I won the Michigan Battle of Bands, so I got a little ahead of him. And we opened up for the Supremes in 1963. And he started a band called the MC5 when I had to move to Chicago in 64 and started the Amboy Dukes. But we're still neck and neck with the American musical rock and roll inspiration. He's got the MC5, awesome band. My Amboy Dukes, awesome band. I'm clean and sober, he started getting high. <clears throat> I stayed clean and sober, he's getting higher. <clears throat> Prison, heroin. Weak, stupid. I still love him. So he got clean. Now he's been clean and sober for 21 years now. He's got a nice son. But it's important to note that, that I've always been the law and order guy. That's why the hippies hated me, which is a great indicator that you're a great American. You <laughs> <laughs> want a hippie to like you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so then he got out of prison, he got cleaned up, but I went on to do what I did. And everybody that got high, well, some of them still do, I guess. But I, they can't form syllables, so I don't know what good that is. Uh, so that's an important lesson, I think. I, I told Jimi Hendrix he was going to die. I turned down his drugs. I went, fuck you. You're drooling, you jerk. Literally. I told uh, Bon Scott, ACDC, I told him he was going to die. I told John Belushi he was going to die. I told Keith Moon he was going to die. I said, no, I don't want to get drunk. You beat your pants. <laughs> Somebody asked me um, how I avoided the temptation with the drugs and the alcohol, and I immediately responded, the same way I avoided the temptation to stab myself in the dick with an ice pick. <laughs> it looked really stupid, like a stupid idea. What kind of temptation is that? Everybody's drooling and puking and dying. Whoa, that's tempting. What the fuck? <laughs> so I've always been like that. And I drive dirt bags crazy. <laughs> that makes me really a neat guy. <laughs> so that's a little anecdote of, in case you're wondering what the hell this rock and roller guy is doing in, in a police station. That's what I'm doing, because I'm with you. I've always been with you. <laughs> and I've been a sheriff deputy for uh, 38 years. Wow. And I've uh, conducted federal fugitive task force raids with the U.S. Marshals. I got 12 felony arrests to my credit. Here's a, I'll leave you with this story. So we're, it's like 3 a.m. in Waco. We're kicking down doors. I got an MP5 and 10 millimeter safety off, <laughs> taking up pressure. We're going after a guy who stabbed a cop. Who let this guy out? Why, is, why are we going after him? Anyhow, and as you know, the adrenaline is... Let's, so let me ask you, do you take a psych in Texas to become a cop? <laughs> uh, no, but I, as, as, did I take a what? A psychiatric test. No, I give psychiatric tests. <laughs> Would you like one? <laughs> Smart ass, but you run into the fight. <laughs> yeah, have you figured your place yet? Just relax, Chief. <laughs> take the 
the rest of the day off, Chief. <laughs> Break your other fucking arm. Anyhow, <laughs> do you feel the love? Hey, why are you loving me? I want to give you a challenge. All right, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Hang on, hang on. Uh-oh. I'm not going to go for that. Ice, yeah. You know what? I wish I had a And I'm sure you got some good ones. I'll take that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And this is on behalf of we the people who know the safe streets come with a price. Thank you. I sincerely mean that. Thank you. Hey, Dirk. So I'm arresting these guys in Waco all night long. We got them hooked on the curb, and the sun is just starting to come up. They're all dirt bags, and they all smell. And I'm feeling really good. I like to kill deer and varmints, but I really like to arrest assholes. And so they're on the curb. And I got the vest on, I got the MP5, and we're a little whooped from all night, because that's an adrenaline, that's like doing a hundred concerts in one day. Whew, you're feeling pretty good, and that guy's on the curb. Oh, fuck, man. Fuck. It's Ted fucking Nugent. <laughs> I love your music, man. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> That's a great story. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, excellent. So, anyhow, thanks for having me here, Chief. God bless you. Wow. You run a great operation here.